If you want to walk in great faith, it's easy. Learn authority. Uh, knowing authority is great faith. When you learn authority, you will operate in great faith. If you do not learn authority, you will not operate in great faith. It's just that simple. And now, we'll, and we'll go into this. We'll, we'll get a chance to go in here and to, to it in just a minute. Notice what he said. So that you may know that the Son of Man hath... Now, notice he said Son of Man. He didn't say Son of God. When he said Son of God, he was talking about his divinity. When he said the Son of Man, he was talking about his humanity and God living in humanity. And so he said here that you may know that the Son of Man, a person in whom the, God, in whom the Spirit of God was dwelling, has authority to do this. Do you get that? Jesus understood authority. And so if you're going to walk in faith, and especially great faith, you're going to have to learn authority. That is the bottom key. That's why so many people, policemen, military, man, they, they grab the gospel that quick once they, once they see the authority part. Why? Because they understand authority. They know what it means to get a command and do it until you get another command. You don't need a command every day. Yeah. Amen? You just keep doing the same command until you get another command. And so they know that and they understand that. I mean, imagine, I, know, I don't know about you, but I know me, I, I would not want your typical spirit-filled Christian cop patrolling my neighborhood. Wouldn't want it. Not, not, I'm talking about typical. Why? Typically trained. Why? Because for all we know, they could be come by, somebody could be climbing out my window with a television or something. And if he's typically trained, then he's going to, first thing he's going to say is, well, you know, uh, headquarters, uh, should I arrest this guy? Is a guy coming out of Curry Blake's window. Should I arrest him? I, I mean, I got to call headquarters to find out if I should act because I, you know, I'm taught I should only do what I'm led to do. And so, now, should I, should I arrest this guy or, or what should I do? Uh, because, you know, I'm not sure what the situation is here because maybe Curry's just reaping something he sowed. <laughs> just saying. I don't know if I were to get involved in this or not. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, I mean, come on. I mean, I mean, maybe Curry's great granddad was a thief, <laughs> and so that generational curse thing has come right on down to Curry, and now he's reaping it. I, you know, I don't know. I mean, come on. I just, I don't want to do anything wrong. So headquarters, what should I do? And what they're going to tell him is very simple: arrest the guy, come in, turn in your badge and your gun, because you're too stupid to be a cop. <laughs> Why? You were hired to enforce the laws of the municipality that hired you. Well, guess what? Okay, let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story? I'll tell you a story. I'm going to anyway. Might as well say yes. Okay. So, there was a man that owned a vineyard, owned a, a, a field, put it that way, and he went out early in the morning, and when he went through the middle of town, all these people standing around talking. Right? And so he said, what are you doing standing here talking? And they said, well, nobody's hired us. And he said, well, I'll hire you. Go to work. And at the end of the day, I'll pay you this much money. And, you know, it's probably $100, something like that, whatever it was. I said, I'll pay you that much money. Okay. And so they all went to work. Then he went back to his home, went back to his office, comes out a few hours later. There's a whole bunch of new people standing there. He said, what are you doing standing around? No man has hired us. Well, I got a harvest field. Go, go work. At the end of the day, I'll pay you. And he agreed to pay them the same amount he was paying the other guys, the first guys. So he goes back in and he does this a couple more times. And then finally, and every time he goes out, now notice the key about this scripture is amazing or this story is amazing because the thing that stands out is this. Everybody got hired. He never walked past anybody and said, no, nope, just stay doing nothing. I'll be back by later. No, he said, get busy. Don't stand here wasting the day. Get busy. Go out and work. And at the end of the day, I'll pay you. And then we know the story. They all came in. And the ones that got there early in the morning were there were the ones at the end of the day. And they all got the same amount. And the people that got there early got mad because they didn't get more money you know, they, they were getting the same amount that the people at the end went, and they all got upset, and he said, well, why are you getting upset? I told you what I'm going to pay you. That's what I paid you. What I pay these other people is none of your business. What does that mean? Don't look at how God's using other people and not doing these things and, you know, all this stuff. No, you do what you're supposed to do. You know, clean up your own backyard. Figure out your own stuff, amen? And don't worry about this other stuff and other people. Don't compare yourself with other people, Amen? If you're going to compare yourself, there's only one to compare yourself to, Jesus. Okay? You've already fallen short. Right? But you can always pick it up. Amen? Why? Because it's him working in you. Do you get that? So, now, understand this. 
already this guy, now, and, and the people got all the, uh, he hired everybody that came in. So the bottom line with that is this. Nobody doesn't get to work. I know this is bad English, but again, it gets the point across. Amen?